halfway through May or a little bit more than halfway through May, I think. <laughs> I should have checked the date. I think we're a little bit more than halfway through May. Memorial Day is next weekend. And then summer. Summer's going to start before you know it. Summer's going to be here. And then all the things that come with summer. You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. If you want to reach out to Stephanie or I and share with us your thoughts about the podcast or a specific episode or give us some feedback in any way, shape, or form, maybe something that we have shared over the course of the past six months really resonated for you and connected with you, we would love to hear from you. The easiest way is to go to the website, energieslovepodcast.com, shoot us a message and let us know what you think. And spread the love and tell somebody about this podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by The Refinery Barbershop. The Refinery Barbershop is located in Springville, Utah. If you are one of the many, many listeners that we have here in Utah, I highly recommend you swing by and check it out. It's a great place to not just get your hair cut, but you can get your beard trimmed, straight razor shave, hot towels. It's this wonderful environment that they create there, providing you a just a wonderful, beautiful experience on top of an amazing kick-ass haircut or beard trim or a complete shave. Maybe you're ready to cut the entire beard off and just have that fresh face. Either way, any of these things can be accomplished at the Refinery Barbershop. You can follow them online. If you go to our website, you can click on the Sponsors tab and find a link to their website. You can also schedule from their website as well. So when it's time to schedule your appointment, hop onto their website. And next time you are there and you're sitting in one of those comfy chairs, getting your hair cut, let them know that you heard about them on the Energy is Love podcast. So I decided to do something different for this intro into this episode, and I am immediately regretting it. What I decided to do was record this portion before we actually record the episode. So I have no idea what you're about to listen to. Other than I, these are the things that I do know. It is episode 142 of the podcast. Stephanie and I do have a conversation and talk about stuff. So <laughs> I'm sure there's some funny moments. There's some inspirational moments. There's some deep moments. I'm sure you're about to enlighten your brain in some way, shape, or form or be challenged and triggered, hopefully, maybe, in some way, shape, or form. I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen other than you're about to listen to a new episode of the Energy is Love podcast with me and Steph. Steph and I. Steph and Craig. So without further ado, since I have no idea what you're about to listen to and I can't talk about it any longer, sit back and relax and enjoy another wonderful episode of something or a great topic on this thing that you're about to hear, but it's an episode of the podcast. Here we go. You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. The energy is love. The Energy is the Love podcast. The Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is Love podcast. The podcast for the universe. The Energy is Love podcast. Cozy-ish. Cozy-ish. With your wolf blanket? Uh-huh. Well, with my wolf blanket. Well, yes, it is yours. But it's like I get a snuggle with you. So, yes. Should we do a snuggly podcast a snuggly. one day? Yeah, we should. Where Aww. we could just use one microphone and talk into the microphone together. And we can just snuggle and talk about snuggling. You would hate it because the whole time you'd hear me <laughs> just going, giving you kisses. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But I really like it. I want to do it right now. Okay. Let's start over. Yeah. And this will be a snuggly. No, let's just adjust it right just now. Just adjust. Just adjust. You just get up and come over to this one. And I think if we get the mics too close, then you get that massive like no, no, feedback don't thing from Leave microphones. your mic there and you come over to mine. And then we'll we'll snuggle. And every time you talk, I'll just <laughs> on your cheek. <laughs> Yeah, that would not drive me nuts at I all. I know, I know. And if you edited out my kisses, I'd cry. We had a first this week for the podcast. We had a first? Yeah. Oh. Where we tried to record an episode <laughs> and it didn't happen. Yeah. Yes. When we, I guess we should clarify. Like we didn't try. We did. 
we recorded some of an episode probably 20 minutes maybe half an hour of an episode and then everything fell apart (laughs) (laughs) kids came home yeah lightning struck tornadoes ripped through the (laughs) the yard (laughs) hurricanes were a blowing yeah none of those things with the exception of kids coming home (laughs) it's the same thing so that sucked but we're here back at it back on the horse we got back on the podcasting horse oh god like was that back in the saddle again song Mm, now i'm thinking like back in i'm thinking of uh i think it's back in the saddle What's that other song that I'm thinking of? Tell I, me. Tell me that other song that I'm thinking <laughs> Big of. Big Balls. No, definitely not. Back in the... Uh, Day Drinking. No, I'm not going to be able to move on unless I get this. Is it back in Stuck the... in the Middle with You. Oh, you're That's thinking the about the, the thong commercial. Not the thong. The thong commercial. <clears throat> Is that on a thong commercial, Stuck back in the Middle with You? Back in the day, you? it showed like, um, <laughs> they're like hanging up underwear on mm-hmm. a clothesline and it was all thongs. And the song was stuck in the middle with you. That's terrible. It was the best. That's terrible. I don't even remember what it was for. I don't know if it was like dryer sheets or. Are people still wearing thongs? Yes. Like I remember thongs were a big deal. Yeah. When I was a kid. Yeah. (laughs) Back in the day when I was a child. Yeah. Thongs are still a thing. How long have they been around, you think? I don't know. The world knows that I don't really wear thongs anymore. Thanks to that little comment, though. I still have thongs and I wear them sometimes. Yeah, but like. I don't think they're as big of a thing as they used to be. I think they are. Are they? I'm yeah. just not. I don't know. Preoccupied because I'm not 14 thinking about thongs <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that was like the thing. If you could tell that so-and-so was wearing a thong, then I was like, oh my God, I think she's wearing a thong. And that was like uh, the coolest thing in the whole world. We can see butt cheeks. That's yeah. the only thing it is, is it's an exposure of butt cheeks. Well, it's not or like, is it naughty? It's not like they're walking around at school and you can... Depends on the school. <laughs> no, but like if you could see the top of the thong at the... Uh, the whale tail. Is that what? Okay. Yeah, that that was a big deal, the whale tail. The and, not so sexy plumber's crack. Yeah, no. I've never really... Like, that doesn't... Mm-mm. But yeah. So yeah, I'm not... I'm not privy to the current state of thongs. Or the thongage that's going would on. Would you in wear the world. one? Uh, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I would wear well, a thong. I want to see you in a thong. A specific... I want to see it pop out the back of your. What would I wear a thong for, though? For me. <laughs> <laughs> I would wear a thong. Hello. For you. Which do you prefer, what? me in a thong or me commando style? Oh well, I I prefer commando. I love the commando and all of that. However, it would be really fun to see you in a thong. So. Like, if I have to choose now forever. Commando. But God, it'd be so funny to see in a thong. I would love it. Just because that's so not your personality. You know, you're like, commando, yes. Thong would definitely be stuck it in the middle. It would be sexy, though, because <laughs> you'd be all like, you'd be like, the, like how, like, you'd have to try and conceal the goods in the front. Or would it just like. Like, I'm trying to figure out how how it would contain your manly bits. <laughs> like, like it's not going to contain. Like, you're going to... They make you're man gonna pop- thongs, don't they? Yeah, they do. And then yep. all those, like... That's pretty obvious. That was not in my, my, <laughs> my uh, wheelhouse so you didn't, you didn't of possibilities. So you didn't want me to wear a man thong. You wanted me to wear... I was totally thinking of a of thong. A, of a regular female thong. That's that's the only thing I think of Not when I think of thong. For yeah, no, I bits. see the error of my ways. It's a really obvious thing, and I'm stupid. So let's just move on. No, <laughs> I, I think thong. I think woman, and I know that. But yeah, my my brain. So yes, yeah, so I want to see in a woman's song. Then apparently that's what it is. And you're you're. That's a lot different than just wearing a thong. That's wearing a woman's thong. So if I get I'll you a, a, a man thong, of, I'll wear one of your thongs. Okay, I have to go like find one though, like. Pull one out from 1996. Seriously. Look, it's the high-waisted version. It goes up to your belly button, but your butt cheeks are exposed. (laughs) That was the thing because everything was high-waisted. So you would have, like, they were seriously, like, high-waisted. It would go, like, up. So weird. Hand me the uh, coffee. The coffee. We really. Can you reach? Oh, we thought that one out. Yeah, we did. 
So, so are we going to keep talking about... No, no. Let's move on from thongs. No. If I buy... Just real fast. So you'll wear a thong. If I go get you a man thong... Will I'll you wear put that. it on? Will you sing the thong, the thong, thong, thong song for me, I will not boy? sing Cisco. And, oh, it's Cisco. See, I didn't even know that. All I got is thong, the thong, thong, thong. What will you sing? You have to sing a song and dance for me. I'll dance. I'm not singing anything. Please. Put me in a thong and I'll give you some magic mic. Oh, hell yes. Podcast out. I got to go buy a thong. <laughs> Podcast over. <laughs> so I want to talk about feet. It, what? Yeah. Okay. Because that stupid flight oh, attendant. Yeah. This is the story. Mm-hmm. I was on a flight. Um I'm trying to think of how to tell this story. My brain suddenly like froze. So I'm on a flight. It hasn't taken off yet. Um, I fly so much that I know like the, I I don't want to say like the ins and outs of flying, but like the fact is if you're in a seat and then there's a whole vacant row, two rows behind you, you can just move to that row and take up the whole row. You don't have to stay in the seat that you were assigned necessarily. I did not know that. And so you have to kind of, there's this little, like you can either ask and sometimes if you ask, then they're like, no, you have to stay where you're seated. Because I've asked before and they're like, no, you have to stay there. And I'm like, bitch, nobody's fucking sitting in that row. And then the whole flight, I sit and stare at it and I'm like, I shouldn't have even asked. I should have just moved. And every time I've just moved, they've never told me to move back. Uh So don't ask. Don't tell. Uh, It can't be like an exit row or you can't move all the way up to first class. But if you're back in steerage where they throw all the poor folk... (laughs) And there's an open row, you know, right next to you or two behind you or two in front of you, whatever the case may be. You can totally get up and move to that row. So that's what I did. I waited until they closed the boarding doors and they say, boarding is complete. And then I move. And as soon as I move, I start stretching out. I relax. Um, I take up the entire aisle. There's three seats. So I put my feet up and I relax and I'm stretched out. And because I wear flip-flops, I just take my flip-flops off, flip-flops off and I'm just sitting there. And there were two flight attendants. One of them did not care, didn't say anything other than was very, very nice. And then another one comes up and kind of gives me this look as she hands me one of their shitty blankets and says, "Um, if you're going to put your feet up on the chair, or if you're going to put your feet up on the seat, would you mind laying this underneath them? And I'm looking at her and I'm like, Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's fine. Because there is one thing that you have to like learn, or hopefully you understand when you fly is flight attendants are always right. You don't ever argue with them. You don't ever tell them no. You don't ever dispute anything with a flight attendant. They're kind of like, um, they're kind of like mall cops (laughs) in the sense that they don't have any real authority unless they're like, I guess they're not like mall cops because mall cops don't have any authority at all. Um, but flight attendants are like deputized federal ar- officers once you're in the sky. So if the flight attendant says, sir, you need to sit down and you say, fuck you, I ain't sitting down. Um, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, the plane's going to come back to earth and there's going to be police officers waiting for you and you're going to go to jail. <laughs> And the flight attendant's going to be like, I told you to sit down, motherfucker. (laughs) Anyways, so when she asks me to put a blanket under my feet, of course I'm going to say yes. Because the other option is not to put my feet up, which is the whole fucking reason why I moved to that fucking aisle so I could stretch out and put my feet up. But it pisses me off. This whole thing of like, your feet are disgusting and we can't have them touching our fine leather steerage ass crack, God knows what else, like vomit. Uh, yeah, they don't clean. Them. They don't clean shit That's on gross. an airplane. They're way gross. See, and your feet were compromised. They were highly compromised. She was protecting your feet, maybe. No, no. <laughs> she was protecting her sense of that somehow my feet are disgusting. But you don't like feet. I don't. But you don't mind my feet. Yeah. So rather than talk I've about, I've kind of got like past the feet thing though. I've had to with massage school. Like, I'm not massage school anymore. I'm massage. But yeah, I don't like... And it's not the first time I've had people kind of turn their nose up at me when they realize that I have bare feet on a flight. Yeah. I've hated feet. I don't like feet. I don't understand it. Because for me, they're just fucking feet. Um, well, I guess... I don't like hands. Yeah? You don't like hands? Hands are filthy. They are. 
Yeah. They are gross. Like, yeah. that's why I, how come you give me a hard time then when I want to wipe off the shopping cart with the little antibacterial wipey thingy? Because that's just silly. That's and I open nonsense. doors with like. With your elbows. Or clothing or however. Push a child into it. To right? Open it up. <laughs> I'll wait for somebody to come get it for me. But why do feet grow, or why did feet used to gross you out? Well, I still like, I have to be in the zone. Like your feet don't gross me out. Like, you know, that is fine. And if I'm working. Then I have a way, you know, I use hot towels, you know, I massage, and then I go wash my hands. So there's that. And the feet are gnarly. Like, we don't have time for that today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I should have an answer for that. I've just never really, I've just never liked feet. They've always been, oh, you know what it is? I think it's because it's sweat because I hate sweat. Like my own sweat, if I'm sweaty, grosses me out. I don't like sweat and your feet sweat. And so when you feel like, oh, I don't like sweat. And so anything that sweats, I don't really want to come up and cuddle with. So there's that. I think that our culture here in America <laughs> has an I extreme skewed perspective when it comes to feet and shoes your shoes are fucking disgusting yes and they're beyond filthy yes and they have walked through every pile of shit between here and wherever you came from yeah and then somehow i want to take those disgusting things off and put my clean feet on your right stupid not clean delta seat like seriously you compromised your feet well my feet were i that's the like i have to turn my ocd off when i fly oh because it's so hard because i take my shoes off because it's comfortable mm -hmm. but i know that my bare feet are going on the floor of the airplane yeah. which hasn't been vacuumed since the airplane was put into service back in 2015 and like i have to just numb all of those parts of me that worry about it because otherwise I would mm. never fly anywhere. You should see me when I have to piss on an airplane. It's this whole ordeal. You wear your shoes, right? I do wear my shoes into okay. that bathroom. Okay. I was like, okay, we've got a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to no. call some flight attendants and tell them to watch out for you going into the bathroom with no shoes. Yeah, but I have a, like, I should, what? I should record an, like a, uh, like a travel hack um, video on how to go take a piss in an airport or in an airplane bathroom. In a clean way. Because I have a whole system. Where you don't touch anything. Exactly. Yeah. But it's very fine-tuned and squared away. That's good. I push the flight attendant through the door first <laughs> so that she opens it for me. And then I throw her back out. You just you just edited that. You're like, she's like, you have her like pull things out and hold it for you. Right. You're like, it's okay, hon. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm I just not have touching her open anything. open the door for me. Like I should just stand there in front of the door and be like, you need to open this for me. She'll think you're coming on to her and one or two things will happen. The door. You'll get in trouble or she'll go in. So please don't try that. There's not room for anybody in those bathrooms. Oh, you alone. can make it work. No. There's a whole club thing, which I think about every time you fly. Those like, have to be international flights. Well, you've been inter on international flights. The one flights? international flight I had not had one. like a legit bathroom. Yeah. Where it was like big enough where you could like actually stand up and move around and like stretch your arms out. That was the only time I'd ever been in an air flight or an airplane bathroom that was like not a closet that somebody forgot to. They're fucking horrible. Yeah, they're gross. I'm terrified of them. The plastic You're doesn't. terrified of them. No, I'm terrified of the germs, but like they don't, like don't they just like drop it out into the sky? No, it's not a straight shot from. I think it is. From your asshole to the sky. I <laughs> I heard well, why is the power that hard? It like sucks like crazy. When you flush it, I'm like, that toilet is not strong enough plastic. And whenever you flush them, I am so afraid that it's just going to like, sorry, that it's just going to like, and I'm going to get sucked out of the airplane. You think that all the airplanes that I are flying around every day. I think they do. Are just dumping shit out across I, the country. I hope not. Like it would be like like really bad to find a turd but don't you think that we would have probably at some point had <laughs> shit oh my god falling <laughs> so do you see how that nope. doesn't quite make sense it doesn't make sense you're right 
but why does it have to suck with that kind of power like it's going outside? I'm grossed out. Gross. Let's change the I'm subject. I'm so having a hard time. Steph's gag reflex is like on a scale of one to ten, it's negative three. <laughs> <laughs> like say gag. No. Just spell say gag. G A G. Oh, oh, oh. Don't finish spelling Shut it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot now. <laughs> I'm <being> sweaty. <laughs> oh, God. <gag>. <laughs> You're cute. So what should we talk about, baby? Well, now my brain's like afraid of flying turds coming out of nowhere. I don't so. think you have to worry about it because it's not a thing. I think it's a thing, but like again, okay, we're going to go. That's in space. Space, they shoot it out. <laughs> That's not safe. But it's space, so we don't care what we dump out there. Okay, I'm going to have to Google. I won't do it now because I know you love when I Google on the podcast. You have to find out what happens to the shit I on the plane. I have to find Kate, the pee. We'll Snakes talk about the plane. pee. We'll talk about the urine. I feel like it just kind of like into the atmosphere. And just evaporates into midair? Well, maybe maybe when it rains. Maybe that's what the chemtrails are. They're not really chemtrails. They're shit trails. That's a lot of pottying. Well, their planes mm. are full of people, full of shit. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, let's I'm change go the on, subject. I'm in a hazmat suit next time we get on a plane. You should. I should. It's me. Yeah. Okay. I do appreciate that. As soon as you get home from flying anywhere, you're immediately like, "I need a shower." Yeah, I hate it. So that's nice. Like your clothes are dirty clothes in the shower. Turn my off and pretend that I'm not swimming in everybody else's germs uh, across the country. It's so good. I love airports. I could spend hours talking about how much i love airports is that what this podcast is gonna be about i'm trying to think if there's anything i like about airports i like something about airports what do you like about airports the uh, bite-sized pretzels like the like the big fat pretzels and they make they them the, bite size. the little pretzel nuggets yeah as i prefer the big fat pretzels i know you do but <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I know about my girl. Oh my gosh. She She likes some big fat pretzels. (laughs) Well, I'm sure you'll have fun with the rest of this. Like, but it's embarrassing to like just eat it in public. (laughs) Then wrap your mouth around the big fat. All that. So I like the the little bite sized ones. So it doesn't look like you're, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I like them. I like that about airports. Except for when you went and get them that I one like time. I like the moving sidewalks. Do you use them? Yeah, they're do you, fun. Do you like to walk on them super fast so it feels like you're like like six million dollar man? And I remember being a kid and being little and going to the airport to like pick somebody up or whatever, right? Whenever you were a kid and you went to the airport, it was like this, oh my God, we're going to the fucking airport. Like it's amazing. Back that, when you could go that far. Yeah, like the airport was the coolest place in the whole wide world where all this really amazing things happened and the airport was like the airport. It was so exciting that you were going to the airport, right? And at the airport, they had moving sidewalks. And so I remember being a kid, getting on those things and just being like, this is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Like I'm on this thing that's moving. Like it was way, way cool. And I still kind of, there's a part of me that's like getting on the moving side. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So I I do like those. I miss being able to like go in an airport. Like now it's just, you know, all the movies that are like, you're at the gate and you're like, wait, I love you. You know, you have to buy a ticket, take three hours to get through security. By then you're like, how much do I really need to stop this person from getting on the plane? Like you've taken all the oomph out of me. Yeah, I, I, I would buy a ticket for you. To I'm run, just saying they took all the romance away from it. To run to the gate? Yes, because that's so Don't like... go, I uh, love you. Like flash, flash right before you go. Like, that'd be fine. It's like, oops, my boob fell out. It was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what rom-com you've been watching. <laughs> the best kind. Like, that. <laughs> that's they never look. So if boobs are out, they're going to look. That's a good point. Yes. Boobs out generally bring somebody's attention. Right, and if somebody says, "Oh my God, there's boobs," everybody looks. Everybody so looks. <laughs> the boob. person's attention you're trying to grab, pop a boob out. They're gonna, they're gonna see you. They're so, gonna look. I'm gonna go test that theory. Do it. Yeah, let's go for a walk. <laughs> let's let's like go. Let's go to the mall. See if I can find you at the mall. I'm just gonna pop my boob out like a beacon and be like, "Dude, it's a good." <laughs> I'm not drunk. Why do I sound retarded? No, it's a good way to get arrested. Yeah. Well. Okay, so let's bring it home. 
I don't even remember where we were going with that. Uh, I don't either. I'm sorry I went off on a dumbass tangent trying okay. to make you, you laugh. Do you need more coffee? Yeah. I'm going to fill mine up. Oh, let's see if I can pour from here. So, babe, <sighs> what is currently present in your life? Currently, there's lots of... Th- oh, you're going to pour for me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Hold on. Oh, don't move. Don't move. Okay. Don't move. Don't move. All right. Oh, my God. That was just my body hitting the mic. I'm sorry. You're okay. Well, currently present in my life, lots of things. Like, what I'm right upset now? with the dog, but we won't say why. Yeah. What right now... Do you feel like is something that you're practicing, working on, or working towards that is a new way of thinking or a new way of moving through experiences or through your life? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. It's not what I was going to talk about, but I actually have one that I've been trying the last couple of days. Um trying to be aware of actions. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about an author. It's like a clip. There's there's this whole series of books, and you know how I like to dive into those. And this one is called, it's like a clip. The books are normally, it's an audio book, but they're normally hours. So this is only, it's only like two hours, which means that it's just like a little, like yeah. clip notes, little snippets. Um, it's that the badass series. You are a badass every day. <gasps> I'm a badass. That's what I mean. I've heard of them. They sound good. Anyway, so I'm listening to it and it's, you know, I was thinking it was a good idea because it's the short, it's the, you know, I'm always in a hurry. I listen to things on higher speeds because I want to get more, as much as I can in a short amount of time because I'm going, going, going. Um but I'm kind of not liking the Cliff Notes version. Like, I feel like it needs to, I want it to go faster. But when you cut it down for me and just give me the little snippets, I feel like I'm missing a lot of the story. You know what I mean? Not me. No, not you, but whoever. So I don't like, I I can't really judge on if this is a good series or not, or if okay. this is a good author based off of this little two hour audio book. Okay. Because it's not in depth enough. So you're just getting the cliff but notes. other ones may be. So at this point, I'm not super thrilled. However, there is something that I got from it that I'm doing. Um, she was talking about changing the way you react to things. And, you know, if you, you can't change the situation, just the way you react to it, that's a pretty common thing, right? And it's bringing awareness to it and changing the way, all the same shit that everybody says. But um, she said it in a way that brought so much like aha, because when you're you're thinking about things and you're in the moment and you're seeing being present with it and recognize it when it's happening. But she says um, what she would do was say. Like, here we go again. It's happening right now. What are you going to do? And just saying that I'm like, oh, my God, that's really good. So when things have been coming up for me, my saying is like, this is it this is it. It's going down right now. What are you going to do? And that's been like helping on things. It has, I haven't had that awareness with everything, but I've had it a few times where like, for instance, sitting in a parking lot, getting ready to ball my head off over something that just really was not working. And I was trying so hard and working so hard to accomplish so much and everything kept falling apart. And then when I had the, I made it right. I was going to be able to pull this off and then had a conversation that said, well, I guess that's really not going to happen. And I was just, I felt so defeated, you know, and it was anger and sadness and all in this, like (sighs) this whole thing. And I just wanted to scream and all this. And it was like, this is it. This is happening right now. What are you going to do? So I sat there and let myself cry for a little bit and then put on a smile and went and got groceries. Whether or not that's how you should go. So that's just it. This is just bringing awareness. This is it. It's happening right now. It's going down. What are you going to do? And then that gives you the changing things as it's happening instead of wishing you wouldn't act like that. So is it kind of like pulling you into the present moment? Yeah. 
kind of a, a phrase or something like that that's helping you recognize some patterns and routines mm -hmm. and dropping you into the present moment and not necessarily forcing you to act, but necessarily, but bringing awareness. Yeah. Bringing awareness mm -hmm. to here we go. This is it again. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Well, so that really stuck out. I liked it too. We'll see what else comes up. So that's something that's been happening the last few days. And then, um, I've been sitting pretty hard in our last podcast, the three Fs, even though I haven't listened to it yet. Mm -hmm. We talked about it. And then um, the safety conversation that we had going to the airport. So with that, some of the recognition that I've had um, around that. And then this is it. It's happening right now. It's going down. What are you going to do? It's been pretty big the last few days. Yeah. What about you? <sighs> mm -hmm. What about me? I feel like I have a new awareness of tension in my body. Mm -hmm. I, this is how I can, this is how I've been thinking about it in my head. Um, I can drop into tension in my body, right? I can slow down enough or connect and check in with my body and realize I've got tension. I realize I'm uh, squeezing my jaw or I'm flexing my arms or I'm my legs. My legs are kind of squeezed together and I've got tension in my thighs and in my hips and things like that. I can recognize that. And what has happened as of late is it's like I have a whole nother recognition of release of that tension. And it doesn't happen in the moments of like, like I have to be really slow. I have to really connect to it and I have to feel it leave my body. And then I get this whole other wave of tension relief that is like, um, what I compare it to in my head, right. As I'm thinking about this, or as I think about this, as it's happening, um, when you float in the float tank and you feel like you're relaxed and then you're like, Oh, wait a minute, I can relax a little bit more. And then you can relax a little bit more. And then suddenly you're like, Holy shit, there's a whole nother level of relaxation and letting go inside of a float tank where you can really let go. And it's kind of like that, where I have a whole nother level of awareness of tension that is leaving my body that feels very, very different. So it's like I'm trying to think of how else to describe it. It's just this whole other level that takes place where I let go of like the, the, the first surface layer and I can feel tension and I bring awareness. I'm like, oh, I can relax that muscle. And I'm like, let's relax a little bit more and relax a little bit more. And then the more I can slow down and be in that moment, then it's like I get this. It's I don't remember if it was on a podcast that you and I did recently or if it was just some of our conversations, because have you noticed that that happens a lot where we can't remember if we talked about this on the podcast or not, but you talked about like, uh, uh like tension or stress in your bones. Mm -hmm. And this, I don't think that was on the podcast. You don't think that was on the podcast? It might've been. Well, shit, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. But it feels like this. It feels like I'm releasing that tension in my bones where like my bones, skeletal structure gets to go and relax and then I feel it not in the focused point that maybe had brought awareness to me in the beginning so it's not necessarily one of those common tension spots that are almost like the gateway into my body it is an overall feeling throughout my entire body that gets to release to a whole new level and that's been happening a lot more lately and that's a whole nother level that I hadn't felt before. And it's really, really neat. And it makes me really, really happy when it happens. But it's almost like the thing in meditation where you're meditating and you want to get that feeling of like that, that sensation that happens when you drop really deep into a meditation. Uh, this is kind of the opposite. It's not the opposite end of the spectrum, but it's the same dynamic where if I try to chase the feeling of like the deep release and relaxation, it doesn't happen. I have to just really 
let it happen and slow down into the process of letting it happen. And then I can sit with my body and feel it release. And it's throughout my entire body, not just in that focalized spot. And that's been really, really neat. That's really beautiful. Yeah. I like how you're all given the description, the the layers, and it increases into the next one. And, and then you're like, oh, I thought I was relaxed. And then another layer comes and I was like, oh, so much more. And you're getting ready to describe it. And I'm thinking we're on the same page. And I'm about to yell, like, yeah, like multiple orgasms. And you're like, it's like floating. I'm like, not where I was going with that. <laughs> like, yeah, it just keeps building. You're like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then it just, you know, like, if, like it, that's where I was going with it. Multiple orgasms. Multiple orgasms and the intensity builds. And each one is seems to be better than the one before until it's this now I'm no longer conscious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm lost in the orgasm sea. <laughs> see? Uh, this is this just came in, oh, hot off the presses. You can't chase them either. They surprise you. Yes, you really have to let go into the more into the multiple into the multiverse yeah. of the orgasmic experience. What's your uh... um hot off the presses? Yes, this is from my buddy John. Just okay. sent me a text. Uh, he listened to the three F's not long ago. Hi, John. You're muted on the podcast and. Uh, Tell Stephanie Again. that oh. hesitation slash freeze and I go way back. I'm getting to know him a lot better the last few years. Please thank her for the courage to bring it up. Aww. So some of the stuff that you talked about on that last episode really resonated with him. Thanks, John. <laughs> no, there is no... Like, you realize that that just came with the hills, me talking about multiple orgasms and now like... Well, that's okay. Thank you. I don't know what to say now. I'm going away now. It's That's what we really talk sweet. about, how important it is, the shit that we talk about sometimes and the things that we share, how they do spark things in other people and how important that is. Yeah, but it surprises me when I... When it comes from you? Yeah. But baby, you got such gold. Thank you. You speak nothing but wisdom. I've been talking about shit flying out of planes and multiple orgasms. Like I, don't I said, think that's nothing, like witness wisdom. nothing but wisdom. <laughs> Pure gold. <laughs> That was really nice. That was it made me feel really special. Thanks, John. The freeze thing has been super, um, I don't want to say profound in my experience right now, but it's very, I have way more awareness of it now and have been working with it and sitting with it over the past several weeks. And that feels very um, profound in my evolution the recognition of it and being able to sit with it and acknowledge it seems like it holds a lot of unlocking of things that previously were frozen. And it's the realization of how often I am in that free state, how often I get stuck there and don't move. And I'll either stay stuck or in order to break free from it, I will disassociate and disconnect. And then you know, so really being able to drop into that and recognize, oh, this is what my body's doing. And this is some of the stuff that we talked about on the episode that shall not be named <laughs> on the episode that we started to record and then <sighs> fell apart uh, in. But it's that whole thing of recognizing that if you are you specifically, the woman that I am with, the woman that I have been with, the woman that I will continue to be with, the woman that is kind of at the center of my universe if she is slightly even like you know slightly not happy then immediately I freeze and I'm like why is she not happy was it something I did immediately is it something that I did wrong how do I fix it how did I fuck up what did I do how can I fix this how can I change this so that she'll go back to a happy state and I stay frozen in that space and then I look for a way out of it to solve it and fix it so that you're then again happy. And it comes from a place of loving you so much and wanting you to be happy all the time. But it also comes from this place of being like, I don't feel safe if you aren't happy. If you're not happy, then that takes me all the way back to the time of being a little boy growing up in a house where my mom and dad were really not that happy. And when they weren't happy, then things didn't feel safe. And 
living in that constant environment of being on edge and nervous and afraid because things did not feel safe. And it's not to say, like I didn't live in an incredibly abusive household, but at the same time, I don't want to minimize the fact that I wasn't like massively physically abused as a child. Um, hmm. I think people have a tendency to do that where I minimize my experience as a child and don't give it the gravity and the weight because I didn't suffer massive physical abuse, but yet I felt very unsafe growing up. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And I'm recognizing more and more and more on deeper and deeper layers how profoundly that has affected me throughout my life as well as still today. And it's playing out in our relationship, in our interpersonal communication and dynamics between you and I. And I'm excited to watch that shift and change because you're looking at me a lot and I'm feeling very vulnerable and it's making me very emotional. So stop looking at me a lot. <laughs> I'm teasing. You can look at me a lot. Um, but I'm excited because as this is shifting and changing inside of me, then I will not, I don't want to say I won't be stuck in the frozen state, but I feel that I will have more awareness as I move through the frozen state. And I don't, I'm not anxious to like change it. I'm just anxious to experience it and move through it in a more cognitive way. Because I don't think that I have, I don't, I don't want to say I don't have the ability, but I think the rewiring process of your brain takes a very, very long time. And as I rewire kind of those neural pathways that were ingrained in me at an early age in regards to my safety and my fight, flight, or freeze response in regards to my safety, those rewiring, uh, that process of rewiring those things is going to take a long time. And in the process of doing so, I want to move through it as wholly and as completely as I can, which I think will also aid in that rewiring process. I feel like I'm talking about things in a very non-descriptive way. Does it seem like I'm talking, does it seem like I'm beating around a, a bush or well, shit, it... maybe I wasn't seeing that though, because everything you were saying resonated so strongly with me that I'm sitting here like, yeah, not only can I see that in you, but I recognize that. And like, you could use those words to describe mine completely. And so I was resonating so strong that it spoke to me so much. I don't think you were beating around the bush, but I wouldn't know if you were because like I resonated so strong. So I don't think so. Like, I could feel everything you were saying from you and from personal. Yeah. So I think safety oftentimes gets, like, pigeonholed as your physical safety. Mm -hmm. And if your physical safety is threatened, then that's kind of an accepted reaction to your physical safety getting threatened. But if your physical safety necessarily isn't threatened, then we don't give it as much weight or it's not as legitimate if it's your emotional health or your emotional safety, even though they have the exact same triggering ex effects on your body, right? So like when I'm physically threatened, I might experience some same physical responses with my body, whether it's a free state or an emotional state, but yet them just coming from interaction or an experience or words rather than actual physical threat, we don't give those as much weight or we judge it more harshly thinking that we need to be stronger than we are because these are just, I don't know. Does that make sense? Maybe not. No, that and you're looking confused. Well, I'm not looking confused. I'm looking at, um, seeing Like the way you're describing that is a level that I haven't achieved yet. So how you're saying that this is a thing that 
needs to be corrected in a sense and that it does deserve this way. I, I haven't achieved, like I'm still beneath that because, um, like this stuff I've been thinking about too. Um, but like that safety, um, if the other person isn't happy, if the other person is mad at you, if the other person is mad at the dog, it doesn't matter. Um, their unhappiness equals unsafe and unsafe absolutely meant, um, like physical safety was unsafe. So always being aware of unhappy person equals unsafe physically. You know, yeah, the emotional comes with it, but like the physical is, you know, you don't even have time to get to that because it's, and so I don't know how to, it's, it's like, it's still, even though that's not, that's not my life, but my body still works that way. Like if they're that unhappy, then my reaction is I'm not safe. My kids aren't safe. And it's that, that physical threat that, whew, and so that kind of goes into my freeze that is so prominent, but I was thinking about how I actually freeze when I'm truly frozen. It's not a frozen. Um, it's not like I curl up in a ball and just stop. It's my frozen looks like, I think it looks like I'm in control because I'm keeping the emotions in because you can't react too much and there's so much frozen, but it, it's like everything slows down and it's this contemplating on, yes, I can't get out of this. I am frozen where I'm at. I am stuck and this is scary, but I have to minimize it as much as you possibly can. So it's like it, everything kind of slows down and not... <sighs> I want to say like Sherlock Holmes and have it be this badass thing that I'm sitting here in this like, ooh, and they can see all these formulas and I know what to do. And it's not that it's just cluster fucking through it. Like, oh, let's not die, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but my body freezes, but my mind doesn't, you know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Very much so. Okay. We're going to take a quick pee break. Okay. I got lost. I'm sorry. Ooh, I'm kind of chilly though. And we're back from the pee break. Yeah. So I have a good question for you. Okay. Because as you were talking about your safety Ooh. and what it triggers in you and how it always reverts immediately back to like your physical safety mm -hmm. and the environment and the kids and all that kind of stuff. Just can you pisses me off. think, can you recall, can you bring forth a memory or an experience or a moment when you feel like you were like not very very safe but when your safety was 100 percent complete where you felt 100 percent safe when you felt no stress no fear no slight edge of worry or concern where like if we were just going to describe in this moment i feel 100 percent safe I don't know if you <laughs> well this brings up other things um I used to feel that with you um yeah I used to feel that with you so you could think of an experience or a moment right yeah. Okay. Now, try to describe what your body felt in that space. What my what my body felt? Yeah, so it's really easy to describe what your body feels when it feels unsafe, right? You can describe whatever your body maybe, you know, you when you're frozen and you can't move or your heart pace, you know, your chest gets tight or all these type of things that take place. Try to describe what your body feels like when you feel safe. Well, now I have a question. Am I supposed to, because I can think of felt safe with somebody, and I can think of a time that I felt safe by myself. So Either. what it doesn't am I matter. supposed to, like, I don't know. I guess with you, I, I wasn't thinking about what my body felt. I mean, I, I was. I was definitely aware of my body at some point, but... 
appreciated a little chuckle there. It was a sexual reference. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Just I describe guess, what your body I don't feels know. when it feels like, safe. Um, I can think of, I have flashes a little bit. I have, uh, I have holding on to you and <laughs> fucking back of a motorcycle, which is really safe. But that's where it was. That's, you know, so many things. And I, I've been on motorcycles plenty of times and I never just like melted before. And I just like felt like I just melted into you and it was like, oh, which also scared me because I'm like, oh, that's a lot of trust. But I, I just, I don't know. I just, I felt protected with you and that was my body felt I don't know I just I relaxed I felt into you I didn't I didn't feel like I had to worry about my body but to tell you what I was feeling I don't I was feeling like a, of a motorcycle you know I don't know what about an experience when you're by yourself um and you feel completely safe I it was when I got off the paths in Sedona when I didn't follow the trails and when I went running through the, just the land and the bush and like all of that. I don't know. I just, I felt, I felt free and I don't know. It was like, it was like strong and just like, I felt able, like just felt able. It was like, I could just keep going. I just felt able. I felt sturdy on my own feet. Maybe that's why I want to go to Arizona so bad. Yeah. I want to, that's, I found my footing and I want it back. Anyways, there's that. What about you? You got any where you feel safe? <laughs> I love how quickly you do that sometimes. Well, you know, I got to make it fair. Let's do your turn. <laughs> yeah, I can think of moments when I felt safe. Let's hear it. Um, they're in conjunction with you. I can think about our time at the yurt. And, oh my God. Um, the first time that we went and we went on our fun little hiking adventure slash digging up the mountain and bringing home 600 pounds of stones. Um, but when we were up at the top and we were laying there, that was a very safe moment. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and for me, my body, oh, I'm trying to think if I try to bring it forth, it's like my mind definitely quiets when I feel safe. Yeah. Like my mind feels very, very relaxed and very, very quiet and not like in a, shh, don't make noise, just in a, uh, okay with the silence. Like when I feel safe, I feel okay in the silence. And when I don't feel safe, I don't feel okay in the silence. When things are quiet and I don't feel safe, I want to move and turn things back up. Yeah. But in... Moments of feeling safe and relaxed. I am at peace with the silence. Then I welcome it. I crave it. I it's lean like into it even more. Yeah, I get that. I think that's a good way to describe it, huh? Yeah. So as I'm thinking about this and as we're talking about this, I'm like, <laughs> it's a really good recognition of one little tiny thing that I can pinpoint to when I feel safe. So then that way, when I have that feeling, I can recognize it, feel it, and then lean into it more because I can then tell my, not tell myself in a lying, manipulative way, but recognize, oh, I'm feeling safe right now. And I think it's important. For me, it's important to bring awareness to when I feel safe because it's something that's so pronounced for me right now in moments when I don't feel safe. And I want to bring recognition and awareness to moments when I do, in fact, feel safe. Can you hear the whistle? Oh, that's what it was. I was trying to figure out what it was. Is is it? The really? boy's coming home. I have so much more I was going to say. Well, we don't have to finish. We can just pause. I, no, I think we do. Because he's going to be like, hey, mom. Hey, I'm hungry. What's up? <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> How was your day? Fine. What happened? Nothing. What'd you do at school? Nothing. 
What is that package? Did you bring me present? No. I'm pushing pause once again. Okay, crisis averted. <laughs> okay, mom, I'm home. <laughs> so now we can drop back in. Okay. Safety. Mm. Silence. Mm -hmm. Being all right and comforted and wanting to lean into the silence when you feel safe. And go. And go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so craving the silence, needing it, loving it, being okay with sound as well as to where um, having a mix of, like you said, like wanting to turn it down when you're safe, like turning it up and needing as much busy and as much distraction to like create as much noise. Um to keep me safe but it has to be volume that i control because if other noise is coming in if the tv is too loud if somebody's talking too loud if somebody's whistling you know just i can't have a whole lot of loud externally coming at i have to be able because it overwhelms in that moment when i'm already so like whew. but if i'm controlling the volume it's totally fine when i don't feel safe um my favorite is dubstep music because it is loud and it is bumpy and you can move to it and sometimes you just need to move but there's not a lot there's stuff with lyrics but there's so much of it that doesn't have lyrics and if I'm not feeling safe I don't want to be triggered by anything so that's I guess that's that's not in the moment that's dealing with the aftermath of the stress of not being safe or not feeling safe or feeling like something not safe is approaching is how I deal with it. But like in the moment, I don't know. I guess it really depends. And as soon as I figure it out, I'll find a new way. I'm like, nope, I actually do this. So I don't know. I do a lot of different things, not safe. And then, but it all comes down to calm and quiet when I am feel safe. So unless I can handle the calm and quiet and lean into it, I don't feel safe. And you? Same? Different? What do you mean? I don't feel safe right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Um, I need you to talk for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Like, tell me. Well, I like the idea of it. I like the, uh, I like the awareness of when I am safe or when I feel safe, I'm okay in the silence. I'm okay with slowing down. I'm okay with being in that moment and when i don't feel safe my body i mean it's it's really easy i'm trying to think now of like what my physical body does in moments of safety and all i can think about is relax like my body just relaxes in those moments of safety but i want i want to i want to dive into that more i want to bring i want to bring more awareness to moments when i feel safe and be able to connect to my body more and see what it's really feeling and what it's really doing rather than just a blanket term of like, well, it's relaxed. What does relaxed really feel like, right? What is my body uh, like really feeling? <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like there's some depth there that I want more of. I want to be able to connect to more of because I want more awareness of those moments because I am convinced as we're talking about this that I do feel that a lot. It's not something that is just in moments of you and I on the side of a mountain, you know, on our anniversary or something like that, that it's very much present in a lot of everyday life, a lot of little moments, right? And bringing awareness to what my physical body feels like in moments of safety, I think is going to help me recognize how often I am in that state, as opposed to feeling like I'm never there. Because we focus so much on the negative side of things, right? That's one big thing that you and I both have been doing a lot of lately. In one way, shape, or form is, I don't want to say focusing on the negative, but we've been very deep into changing routines and patterns and bringing awareness to them so that they can shift and change and evolve and everything like that. So let's take a moment, beautiful wife of mine, 
and talk about some of the things that we're winning, some of the things that we're accomplishing, some of the things that we are doing a hell of a job at right now. Here comes the uncomfortable silence that we don't feel safe in. Let's turn it up. <laughs> I am in big transformation right now. And I have a lot of like future career choices floating around. I <laughs> don't feel like I'm killing it right now. So I don't really have a lot of things that I can. Like I know I will. And I can look at things that I have, but right now in this moment, I'm in the, like, like it's the shit storm part, you know, where everything's kind of, well, let me bring some awareness like for I'm you. I'm killing anything. I feel like I'm destroying right now. So in your shit storm uh -huh. of all the shit that's coming from airplanes flying above oh us. Oh my God. I have to Google it's that. It's just a storm of shit all the time. It, but the shit does not dump out of an airplane. Well, I'm going to look because I didn't just pull that out of my ass. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this moment of chaos, in this transformation mm -hmm. phase that you're in right now, you are moving through it in a vastly different way than you ever have before. You think so? And the coping mechanisms, quote unquote, that you're using to move through this period of time look very, very different than the coping mechanisms of the past. To some, to some, some, blah, 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 to some Don't minimize degree. it. Don't minimize no, it. No, because I'm looking at all the ways that I can very clearly see our old patterns. And I'm like, well, that's just going to be what it is right now. But our house is clean. Excuse me? Our house is clean. Thank you. You have been channeling a lot of this energy into just cleaning the house. Yes. Which is completely different than you have ever done before. That makes me sound lovely. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's, a, it's a different coping mechanism than you've had before. It's a more channeled, focused, in a productive way, even though it still is in some way, you know, trying to find something to keep yourself busy with rather than some of the other things that you may have done in the past. I've, I've calmed down a little bit. I'm not doing the crazy, like, thing that I was, I would, you know, I was getting up and starting to clean and continued to clean till it was like the next day and then going to bed and then get up and start cleaning. And I wouldn't stop. I would, like, I don't even know how many times I vacuumed the same spot. And, yeah, no, I was definitely But you don't see that as a win? Um, I see it as a win to a point. Yes, I do. I do see it as a win. Um, you, I don't know. You made me feel bad about it. Now I'm confused. Cause you're like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to say it like that. Like, <laughs> Baby, what you used to do in moments like this, when you felt extreme chaos uh -oh. is you would freeze and you would not move and you would just stay frozen in this space. Okay. And you're not doing that right now. You're moving like literally cleaning the house right mm -hmm. which i mean yeah it's cleaning the house or whatever and it's not like you didn't ever clean the house before it's kind of what it sounds like no you definitely <laughs> cleaned the house but you're moving through this experience of this turmoil and this chaos and this transition phase in your life you're moving through it rather than before just staying stuck in it and so that's a huge shift than you've ever had before Thank you. That's a big win. It is. Thank and it's you. hard to see those sometimes. It is. And I like, sorry, I guess, am I too far? Like no, you're maybe fine. I'm bringing it a little bit more. You're is totally okay? fine. Okay. And then, um, I guess if I'm going to be 100% honest in my flaws, which sucks. Um, I put way too much value into what you think and say, and feel, you know, because you say that, but I hear the one time you said, I can't get you to sit down for two seconds to talk to me. And like, that's the loop. It's like, even doing this, I'm feeling like, like I have way too much, way too much, um, makes me like feel like a, a weak-minded woman 
to be that hung up on what you say and think and feel. You know, I know I am, but to admit it, at least, you know, if I can hide it, you don't think that, no, oh, the world revolves around Craig. But, I don't know. Like, if you're disappointed in me, it's hard. And so that's, you give me a little bit of disappointment. And instead of hearing that, like, I embody that, you know? So, it... <sighs> I told you I wanted you to talk. I don't want to talk. <laughs> I'm struggling with this. And this feels like it's super loud now. You're totally fine. <laughs> you can keep moving the mic around Sorry. if you want to feel more comfortable. I think that dynamic, because I have that same thing. And I used to struggle with that thing of like, I want your approval and your acceptance all the time. I want you to tell me that I'm okay. I want you to re uh, reaffirm i want you to make me feel good I, I i want to know that you not just love me but that you accept me and that you know and i used to struggle with that thinking that it was a weakness of mine and that somehow i needed to move past that and learn all of this self-love and acceptance of who i am and everything like that and what i am now at in my everyday life and where i sit in my head is accepting the fact that it's like Brene says, like we are wired for connection and there's nobody that I want to be more connected with than you. And so because I want that connection so much and because we have that connection so much, I want to reinforce that that connection is safe and that that connection is there. And one of the ways that that takes place is feeling like you accept me and wanting your approval because if I have your approval and if I have your acceptance, if I have your love, then I have the connection with you. And that connection is so important. And that is not a weakness of mine. That does not make me less. That does not make me unenlightened because I can't just be okay in my own space and my own self-love. I can definitely work on the self-love aspect of who I am and accepting who I am. But I'm also wired for connection with you. And that's not a weakness. That's actually a strength. And I crave that connection. I see that. I feel that. I think I've like known that because it's like known it without knowing it kind of thing. It's like, you know, when you say something repeatedly, but mm -hmm. you never really hear it. Like I remember saying, like, like things about like, um, like I'm okay being alone. Like I can find my own safety by myself. I can create my own space. I'm fine being alone, but I don't want to share life and have to live like I'm alone. Like if we're going to be in that space together, then I want to also receive that from you because we're sharing that. And my soul existence doesn't depend on that, but our existence together, I think it does depend on that. We need that nurturing from each other as well as with ourselves. So if it's just a, like, <laughs> if, if we treat our relationship like we're like unicellular, then we're just self-sustaining ourselves that's it then it doesn't like work how does that a relationship build but if it's the multicellular the whole organism thing everything correlates and works together to form the body to form the relationship so I don't want to be alone right next to you I don't want to have to worry about my worth completely and love and safety completely when we're sharing the space and I don't want you to feel like you have to worry about your space and your safety completely when we're sharing the space. Like I, it's like it's totally better together, you know? However, I don't think I should take it to the extreme of, <laughs> you say one thing and then I'm like, oh, I'm worthless. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a, there's, there's a. There's a 
you know, there's a healthier way, I'm sure, to do it. Then. Well, that's the whole awareness that I have right now, right? Where you say one thing, that doesn't mean that I'm worthless. I'm safe. What do I say? I don't say anything. She loves me. I'm worth it. I'm, I just tell you how wonderful you are, Constance. I do. <laughs> like, I would love to know what, what it is, what my quirks are. No, I want to hear. Is it okay to have awareness? Uh-huh. What is my action other than if I happen to be stressed out about something? But like, what is it about that? Like, what is my action that makes you feel unsafe? Oh my God. Was it that right there? Cause your eyes just like you like deer in a headlight and that one. You're like, <laughs> it's not necessarily, I mean, beautiful eyes. They were really big right it's there. It's not necessarily like your actions or I can't pinpoint one specific thing. Like every time you do this or every time you do that, I don't feel safe. It's more of a general sense and it's, it comes in t- conjunction with sometimes our conversations or, or your reaction rather than just your action. So your reaction to something that I say or something that I do. And as soon as you have a reaction, which there's no need to change, right? Mm-hmm. You get to have your reaction regardless of what it is. But if you have a reaction that I interpret in any way, shape or form as negative and not from a judgmental standpoint, but as a, yeah. oh shit, here's danger. Mm-hmm. Then immediately it's like, I'm not safe. Oh, she doesn't love me. I'm a piece of shit. I'm worthless. And I think like that still blows me away. I'm over here thinking, you know, like, oh my God, your, your brow furrowed a little bit. So therefore our, like everything's like, you hate me. (laughs) I do the same thing. Your face will do this thing sometimes where it's, it's almost like you're uh, confused. Like, uh, I don't understand what you're saying. And you have like this confused look. Or you have like a surprised look. Like even sometimes when you look surprised when I say something, not a surprise and oh. I got you a present, but a surprise like, what? what? What what did you just say? Yeah, those are actually danger zones. You you That's okay if you don't feel safe though. Like if you give me the wows, dude, like that, that is a, I'm just kidding. No, not really. But that's, that's a, that's what happens. Yeah. That you have that reaction and then my immediate response is a deer in a headlights frozen. Oh shit, I'm not safe. She's mad at me. Sometimes. Like you're totally safe, but like sometimes, like sometimes, you know, and you're like, oh, I'm having a seizure and you, which is adorable. <laughs> I get you out of like so many things when I really am mad at you for something and you do the, I'm faking a seizure thing. That's a funny story. Oh my, it is a funny story. However, how you do it and you pull that into that, it's an immediate like, oh. I have to tell that story. You can tell it right now. So back when I was a cop, <laughs> there was a, a gal that we dealt with on a regular basis for quite some time and... I was going to say her name because I still no, don't no, remember no. her name. Anyways, <laughs> every time you would try to arrest this person, every time you would try to arrest this woman, her go-to way of getting out of being arrested was to fake a seizure. And I remember one time it was me and, uh, oh, I remember the other guy too, but I won't say his name. Anyways, it was me and another officer. We were in Walmart. She was being called in because she had been trespassed from Walmart and she was there shoplifting again. And we find her and we try to take her into custody and she starts fighting us and resisting. Like her resisting isn't like swinging fists and trying to kick and scratch or anything. She just like tries to pull away from you and she's very actively resisting, but not aggressively resisting, I guess is a good way to describe it. So you have to, you know, eventually take them to the ground and try to control her and try to get her in handcuffs. And as soon as you like get her to a certain level, Then she just starts faking a seizure and she starts like shaking her body. But the best part is she'll, she'll literally will say, I'm having a seizure. I'm having a seizure. And like saying it as loud as possible. So everybody at Walmart pays attention. And then it looks like we're trying to arrest some poor woman that's having a seizure as opposed to somebody that's totally (laughs) faking a seizure to try to get out of it. But she did it multiple times. Like every time we would try to arrest her, that was her go-to. And sometimes it would work, like some officers it would work for. And then you go through this whole process of having to call the paramedics, and then she has to go to the hospital, and she has to get checked out for having a seizure, and then she doesn't actually get booked into jail. And she learned that game. And for me, I'm like, this bullshit. You're not having a fucking seizure. Don't move. You're going to fucking jail. I remember there were times where I was like putting her in the car. I'm having, you're not having a seizure. Get your ass in the fucking car. You're going to jail. Like we're done with this shit. You don't get to pretend to have a fucking seizure so you don't go to jail. But yeah, it's my good go-to. It is. It's good. Weren't you telling, I think this was a while, like I think Asher was like eight. 
he was around there and we we're talking about it and he's like you can't talk when you're having a seizure <laughs> we're like, you're right kiddo <laughs> It's like, that's dumb. Why is she doing that? There were times <laughs> He's where... He's not even double digits. It's like, that doesn't work. Yeah. Or like my favorite too was when you'd like have a bunch of guys on top of somebody trying to arrest them and they were fighting. And then they're like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I'm like, mm, you're talking. I'm pretty sure you're breathing. <laughs> yeah. It might be a little know. labored. might be a little hard, but... <laughs> I go with that. Like, I wouldn't fight. Or resist, even like if I was this big hardcore criminal, I would turn into the biggest pansy ass when it came time because I can't handle like having that control taken away, being restrained. And so if your breathing starts to be restricted, like it would totally like I would flip out. I could not. And I would totally because that's the thing is I feel like I can't, you know, you're breathing, but you feel like you can't just because that being pinned down and Mm -hmm. that, oh my God, that panic. I would just have to be like, okay. (laughs) That way I'm having control. Like, here you go. You're like, you just got a speeding ticket. No, it's okay. Here you go. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> can I, can I cuff myself? Maybe. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I, I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. Could not handle that. I would look like a crazy person. Lucky for you, you're not a criminal. Well, today, but let's see what tomorrow holds. You That's know, right. maybe I'm gonna, I don't know. Bonnie and Clyde this shit. Yeah, well, not after... The Netflix with yeah. uh, Woody Harrelson oh and Kevin gosh. Costner. Like, that was sad. They were bad people. <laughs> um, I was going to say something else before we got onto that, and I can't remember what it was. That's okay. No, I hate that. I really want to, like, I was going to do that, and then I got sidetracked. I wanted to say something. Is it coming back to you? No. No, I think it's getting farther away. I really wanted to say it, though. I felt like it was a good thing to say. I wanted to express it. I wanted to bring that thought into fruition and let it out. Now it's going to drive me crazy. Well, let's sit in silence and wait for it to come That's back. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um, Hold on. Oh, I got it. Sweet. I got it. Um, So going back to like the safety thing and the saying stuff... Um. I feel like it doesn't, there's situations where you're in where other people can take your safety away, like in public, right? But for the most part, I feel pretty in control in public. I feel um, like you can definitely sense when there's a situation that you're like, oh, I need to handle this differently. Um, But for the most part, I don't feel unsafe in public. Um, I do for our kids, but that's a whole other thing. So like somebody can say something and I can even like, I feel bad if people don't like me. And then there's times that people don't like me and I just don't give a shit. So it really depends. Like the freaking lady from the grocery store, it bothers me. Like, why is she so mean? I hate that. I want her to like me, but the Henri asked at Walmart, for instance, I'm like, I don't give a shit what you think. You piss me off too. You know, so it's kind of a, um, I don't, I don't feel like my safety is threatened if somebody's upset with me. However, I feel like, I don't, I don't know. It's because it's safety isn't like love and safety are very things. So it's not, but with you, it's different. It's different. It is, hmm, I don't know. I'm doing a terrible job. I guess it's, I, I do I, de- maybe I depend on you. That's, and that makes me feel like, not only does that make me feel guilty, but it makes me feel um, defiant. Like if I feel like I depend on you, then it's like, you know, hey, y'all hold my beer, watch this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go tear that shit up i'm gonna rearrange that um but like i i guess it maybe it's because there's so much trust that i have to have with you like we live together we parent together our lives are our life you know it's so i have to trust you i have to depend on you for safety like 
the entire world of safety does not lie on your shoulders. But I don't, I struggle with trusting people, right? I struggle with trusting and letting people close. I struggle with like really allowing myself to be vulnerable. And because I'm vulnerable with you, not only with you, but like with our kids, then therefore that is a dependence. Like I'm trusting and depending on the safety to remain with you. Therefore, it's harder to accept that it's there because it's so. Because there's way more at uh, risk. There's way more. Yeah, there's like way more at risk. And there's like, this is, this is where we go for safety. You know, you go home, you run home, you come home to be safe. You come home to get away from everything else. And if home doesn't feel safe, which is what I'm used to, Mm -hmm. then nothing is safe. And so even though home is now safe, nothing is, it's still hard. And even if I know I'm safe, it's a high alert. So it's not so much of, am I safe? Am I not safe? Am I safe? Am I not safe? Which it is, but it's like, if I am safe, sorry, if I am safe and if everything's okay, then I'm aware of what's happening. Like what's that thing that's going to spark that anger, spark that aggression that it's no longer safe. So it's like, it's like I'm always like sensing where is the safety not there. So even when you're safe, it's, I can't so, relax. So that's a good recognition um, because I'm going to challenge you in that moment. I think I was safe. I was challenging. And what you're describing of even when it's safe, still being hyper hyper vigilant mm-hmm. um, for things that can uh, threaten that safety. Um, I, I don't think that's really safe that you're feeling. Because if we go back to earlier when we were talking about when you feel safe, Mm -hmm. what does it feel like? In those moments that you can recall that we talked about earlier, when you feel safe, you don't have that added layer of hypervigilance where you're looking out for something. So I think that, yes, there's a degree of safety that ensues and you're still hypervigilant. But I think that hypervigilance that's taking place is really also keeping you from really leaning in and feeling safe. Okay, maybe. Maybe it's one and the same that I thought was another layer and it's just one and the same. Yeah. What about you? Well, what do you mean? What about Like, how does that, like, does that speak to you at all? Because you're talking about moments of safety, but do you also have that in the moments where I'm not pulling a face or something? Do you, are you aware? Are you always like, like, like taste in the air for that? that shift yes. that's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a big chunk of time that is spent waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Or simplify it so easily yeah. with that phrase, whatever, but that, that goes to joy. So is it always because you can't joy happens when you're safe and safe is like, wait, this is a whole big conversation. It is a big conversation and we got to wrap up. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I, he's, doesn't want to hear me talk anymore. Shut up, I'm girl. not saying. <laughs> this is a big conversation that we can continue. Yeah. Um, the next episode of the Energy is Love podcast. Baby, it's just simple logistics. We can't leave the boy downstairs. What are you? I'm what? telling you, wrap it the fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> like we're done. <laughs> Behind the camera. Out, out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a big conversation. But I'm excited to have it with you. And the truth is I do feel safe with you. I do feel safe with you too. And that is scary. That's terrifying. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. I know it's okay. Because we're in it to win it. (laughs) We're here for the long haul. Like we always say, we're playing the long game. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. Podcast. You want me to say it? To be continued? Out. (laughs) This is it. It's happening right now. It's going down. What are you going to do? When things are quiet and I don't feel safe, I want to move and turn things back up. I think the rewiring process of your brain takes a very, very long time. My body freezes, but my mind doesn't. Put me in a thong and I'll give you some magic mic. Oh, hell yes.